Hello everybody, welcome to our presentation about Compass in the next generation substation automation. My name is Sander Janssen, I'm co-presenting with Rob Chalmer. So um, I'm product owner at Alliander. I work on uh, virtual substations. So we're, we're looking at the new generation of substation, substation automation from a system operations perspective. And I have a uh, background in uh, data architecture and uh, electrical and engineering. And I work at Alliander. Alliander is a Dutch uh, DSO. And we have a couple of millions of uh, households uh, and, and companies connected to our grid. And uh, we're uh, transitioning from a DNO towards more uh, a DSO. And I'm co presenting with Rob. Hey, uh, yes. Yes. Um, 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 hi guys, uh, my name is Rob and I'm a software developer specialized in Java. Thank you, Rob. So if you look at the world around us, you, you notice a change in the, in the energy landscape. Uh, you see an increasing need of uh, renewable energies and you see the, the increase of demand by electrical cars, for example. And that puts uh, stress on the uh, the current uh, grid of today. Um, so with, with the, the, the grids of the future, if you want to hook up uh, connected parties to uh, to your grid uh, that's already stretched out, yeah, you need to look at smart solutions and therefore you need uh, more flexibility uh, in your grid, uh, how to uh, route uh, energy sources and maybe connect even with customers to uh, to change uh, the amount of energy they put on the grid. And that's all because of uh, mostly renewable energy that's connected to the grid. And uh, with these challenges, uh, yeah, we as a DSO, we need to cope with this, uh, these, these challenges. And that's why we're looking into uh, substation automation as, as part of it. So if you look at the uh, substation automation in particular, uh, we see a need of uh, more dynamic protection settings. Uh, if, you, if you look at the load uh, from a ca cable, for example, that can vary in, in the time. And obviously you want to change your protection settings as well. So if it's cold weather, maybe the cable allows more uh, distribution of energy. And if it's hot, uh, there's not so much capacity. Um, we also need uh, adaptive automation functions, so the state of the grid can change over time, the energy flows can change over time, and therefore maybe you want to add uh, different functions depending on the state of the grid. And uh, what we need to keep, to keep track of the entire system is a great deal of uh, data management, so what's, what's the configuration in your field, uh, how does it work, uh, where does it come from, uh, what's deployed, uh, who has access to it, et cetera, et cetera, to, uh, to keep uh, full control of the entire system. So if you look at the uh, the, the current state of, of substation automation today, uh, you see a lot of uh, black boxes uh, and, uh, and that are proprietary IEDs and they, they contain the hardware, the software and the orchestration. They do have a standardized interface most of the time uh, by using the international standard IEC 61850, but they, uh, yeah, still a lot of proprietary uh, uh, stuff in one box. So if you look at the more than recent developments, uh, for example, in the uh, in the telecom sector, you see so market uh, distribution this disruption uh, by driving innovation. So you see more virtual functions. You see more automation, uh, software defined, and disaggregation. And uh, those uh, innovate, innovating functions um, are, we are planning those functions to uh, incorporate it into the substation. So we're looking towards a more open source based stack with services, orchestration, operating system, uh, standardized network, and, and, and hardware. And it is similar to the transition uh, the telecom industry made from, from a single device with one single function to uh, entire uh, distributed, disaggregated uh, uh, telecom system. So 
where do we fit in the uh, the energy landscape? Um, so we fit in the acquisition and control area of the LF Energy uh, functional architecture, and to be to be more precise, we fit in the substation uh, substation node uh, category. Architecture wise, um, you, as you can see here, this is a typical substation from uh, from our company. So you uh, you got your earth uh, disconnector, you got your uh, transformer, you got your uh, current transformer, you got your uh, breaker, uh, more disconnectors, and some uh, voltage uh, transformers on the on the rails on the rail section side. So what we're what we're looking at currently is an architecture where uh, where we have uh, relative uh, simple stupid uh, sensors that convert the analog signal signal into a digital signal, and these are merging units, uh, I/O for Goose, uh, digital instruments to inform us, and there are some uh, IC standards for that. Uh, from the stupid sensors that that can probably last longer than than the intelligence we want to put on top of that. Uh, the idea is to use a process bus, 61 and 50 process bus, to go to a more centralized uh, protection system. And uh, one option here is the uh, the LF Energy C pass. That's a that's a platform where you can uh, run your functions, uh, your protection functions, for example, on top of it. And they will uh, present later in this uh, in this uh, conference. And from the LF Energy C pass, you can go with the substation to a gateway uh, to get your data uh, out of the substation in a secure way. And uh, uh, as the LF Energy solution for that would be uh, LF Energy uh, Flash Power. And from the gateway, you can go to the central systems. So obviously this is an example. There are uh, a lot of there are more options to combine all this uh, solution and also incorporate existing uh, product out there in the market because uh, we're heavily based on on, on standards. But uh, yeah, now the question is where does Compass fits in the comes into play? Well, uh, Compass is the uh, substation configuration tool. Uh, that manages the uh, substation configurations and those configurations can be used to configure your instruments transformer, your uh, substation automation functions, your gateway, and maybe even uh, load into your central systems like your uh, like your SCADA system. So the goal of uh, Compass is to uh, yeah to to build an uh, open source. Uh, Software with components for 61 and 50 model implementation, including uh, profile man profile management and configuration, and is specifically uh, designed for protection, automation, and control systems. So the current focus is around um, uh, substations, but yeah, 61 and 50 is also used outside the substation, and so therefore Compass can be used for that as well in in the in the, in the future. So by making it open source, uh, we like to develop faster, and by collaborating, we think we can uh, we can improve the the system uh, continuously. So, what are the requirements we want to cover with uh, Compass? The use cases. Um, so one of the aspects is we want to facilitate uh, top-down engineering by uh, requirement specification with the, the substation specification definition. Um, we have an early product of uh, SIM to 61 and 50 conver uh, conversions for, uh, for grid planning uh, purposes. Um, and the effort by doing so, we think we can, can reduce the uh, amount of time to generate 61 and 50 configurations. Um, we're also looking into supporting operational changes. Uh, as as I said, uh, the, we could end up in a future where we need to change the configurations more often. Um, so we like to support that with Compass. 
Uh, with Compass, we also facilitate asset management. What, what's in your substation? When do you want to do uh, maintenance? And uh, we like to have Compass as a register for all the substation configurations, so other systems can uh, use that as well. So they can uh, the configurations the configurations can be used for a uh, SCADA system, configuration management database, grid control. Are there no uh, control circuits that interact with each other or work against each other? And that's why you want to have a, a good picture of, of what's in the substation, what functions are running there. If you look at the COMPAS roadmap, uh, we have uh, several priorities. Um, we're heavily looking at the 61 and 50 for, for the substation configuration tool and, and their recommendations uh, of the IEC. Um, but currently, high priority is uh, the reference architecture. We have some uh, basic reference architecture in place. And uh, we're looking at uh, working on system configuration. Uh, SIM to 61 and 50 is a topic we worked on. And at this uh, quarter, we're planning to work on integration with OpenSED, which is another open source project with uh, similar goals as, as Compass. And later on, the idea is to work on the system specification part of Compass, uh, profiling and, uh, and testing your configuration in the field. So you have a configuration and does that match the configuration in the, I in the actual IEDs? And now I'd like to hand it over to uh, Rob to talk about more the technical side of Compass. Ah, yes, Sander, uh, thank you. Um, let's have a closer look to our uh, simplified technical architecture. Um, if you're interested in the uh, more detailed architecture, uh, we have a, a architecture uh, GitHub pages uh, website, uh, which will be uh, linked in the next uh, slide. But here you see the um, simplified technical architectures, so, so you can have a quick sense about the technologies that have been chosen. So um, we decided to um, use a, a microservice architecture. Um, so every microservice is is his own uh, surface. So for example, the uh, SIM to 61850 uh, mapping is oh, one of these uh, is oh, is oh, one of these uh, microservices. Um, to, uh, within uh, these microservices, uh, to, uh, we chose the uh, the Java. To, um, to a programming uh, language, we decided to use uh, to use Gradle as the uh, build uh, tool, um, and we chose uh, the microservice framework um, uh, Quarkus because it's pretty uh, memory efficient, and if you want to uh, to run a uh, uh, compass, for example, um, for example. For example, uh, for example, um, uh, locally, uh, then it's handy to have a, a memory efficient uh, application, for example. Um, as the underlying database, we chose a base X because it's a, a because it's a, a native XML database, and we uh, do, and we uh, do need some um, XML. X some 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 and we do need some native XML um, um, actions. Uh, let's say it like uh, that. Um, and on top of this, um, as a front end, it's possible to use OpenSCD, which uh, Sander stated uh, be, uh, stated uh, before. And because we host our to our to our to our code on the GitHub, it's pretty 
it's a pretty obvious uh, it's it's a pretty obvious choice uh, um, to uh, use uh, the uh, GitHub Actions for our CI CD. So uh, we created some actions for example as uh, owner cloud uh, uh, building uh, the application and for uh, for example um, for example reuse so uh, we can uh, check for the correct uh, copyright headers and the correct uh, license information uh, within the source uh, house so th this is a, a quick uh, technical t overview of our uh, of our um, the architecture. Then we can go to the next slide. Um, let's talk a bit about the current state of a Compass. Um, there hasn't been a release a yet because Compass is still in the beginning state. Yeah, not really, but it's not um as as a mature uh, uh, yet to release it yet so there's no release yet um the architecture as we stated before is ready if you go to uh, that uh if it, if you go uh, to that uh, github uh, pages so website there are all the uh, architectural uh, choices uh, um, to, um, yeah, to, to, um, yeah, documented. So there's also a uh, more uh, detailed architecture available on that uh, on that uh, GitHub pages uh, website. Um, so have a look. Um, all the basic uh, build tests streets uh, and stuff are in a place and also the documentation is in a place uh, I also uh, we also added the uh, LF energy uh, wiki um, so that's that we have the basic sim to c 61 a 50 uh, mapping function uh, which is also stated before and we are working on the SCT services. SCT stands for uh, System Configuration uh, System Configuration and Configuration and uh, Configuration and Tool, and it's uh, used, for example, to uh, create SCD files, uh, uh, which stands for Substation Configuration Description, I believe. Um, the active contributors so far are RTE, GE. And Alianda, and there has been a, a, and there has been a, a collaboration planned with OpenSCD, which also was stated before. All right, then we would like you to uh, join the uh, movement. Uh, we have several opportunities to. Uh, 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 we have several op opportunities to stay in a contact. So we have a LF Energy Slack Slack channel, which is the hashtag Compass uh, channel, uh, which is also our 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 primary uh, source of 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 of, of, of keeping in uh, in the touch. Uh, we have our our um, our 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 GitHub repo. Um, so there we have the so there we have uh, the organization um, uh, Compass. We also have a, a mailing uh, list, which is on the lists.lfng.org. Uh, I believe it's slash g slash 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 Compass uh, to. Uh, join and we have a bi-weekly open community call which is used for uh, as a meeting uh, where everyone uh, uh, where everyone can uh, uh, can join and speak about the things that they do 
uh, which is related uh, to a compass or uh, or what they are doing or um, um, yeah, uh, yeah, stuff like uh, that. If you would like to uh, join, the invitation is on the uh, mailing list uh, calendar. So um, that's that. Yeah, thank you all for uh, joining. I hope it was uh, interesting to you. Um, uh, as a quick recap, uh, we addressed the need for uh, more uh, control over substation configurations. Uh, how COMPAS and CPAS fits in the uh, LF Energy landscape and how the architecture looks like, how it relates to the IEC. We use a lot of IEC standards and uh, what technical choices uh, we made. So if you have further questions, um, reach out to us uh, by the channel suggestion. And uh, once again, thanks for your attention. So hello everyone, um, let's go to the questions. So first question, does Compass intend to, com uh, how does Compass intend to communicate with CPAS device or Fletch power device? Uh, well, that's currently uh, undefined yet. So we're using the substation configuration language. And uh, as far as I understand, the 60850 standard itself does not describe a method to supply uh, your files to, to IEDs or other uh, devices. Uh, however, I I know that uh, some working groups in the IEC are working on, on, on device management, and maybe that's uh, something we can use to, uh, to deploy the files. Um, question from Nico Ricken. You mentioned top-down specification. Is there a need for bottom-up fact-finding into SIM from 61 and 50, or is that covered by other solution projects? Yeah, I think eventually there's a need to, uh, to combine uh, 61 and 50 configuration and your uh, primary uh, SIM uh, ne network topology. Um, for now, what you're, what you're currently seeing in the industry is that, that most uh, specifications are based on uh, templates, so uh, a little bit more bottom up. But by doing this project, we like to have that more uh, standardized. Uh, question from uh, Christian from OpenSCD. Does the same 6150 mapping service works in both directions? Um, currently not. Uh, we're just do same to 6150, uh, but it's a very limited subset. Uh, then a uh, question, could you elabor uh, elaborate a little bit more about the work on the SCT? Yeah, so uh, so we, what uh, what work is done on the SCT, you can find it on the, on the GitHub issues, uh, but it basically comes down to implementing the SCT uh, specifications uh, of the 61850, uh, as far as I understand. Then I saw a question about, of uh, Ross Davidson in the chat. Yeah. Um, uh, what about cybersecurity? Can you take this question now up? Oh, I'm answering a, a question of of a question. Uh, maybe a, maybe you can do it. Yeah, sure. So in terms of cybersecurity, we did um, a kind of threat analysis, a security analysis, what measures need to be uh, need to be taken. And even from the from the security point of view, we like to reuse the IEC standards on this uh, on this topic. Um, well, one of the ideas we like to do is uh, to sign the uh, substation configuration uh, files. So yeah, if you assign them, then the other side can, if it has the key, can check if the if the file is correct or not uh, tampered with. Um, however, uh, the devices or the the vendors there that you where you want to deploy your configuration uh, does need to support that, and I'm not sure if the entire market uh, already supports it. Uh, but I yeah, I think there's some room for uh, improvement. 
Uh, the other question uh, of Ross, uh, what's the use of AI in this project in the context of energy transition? Um, yeah, if you're referring to artificial intelligence, um, we don't use that. Um, if it's artificial intelligence, you normally, normally look at the prob probability rates. So you say we're 90% sure this is a car. Uh, in our case, if that's 10% uh, will lead to um, to outages in your grid, then it's not so um, not so useful. Um, so currently it's not foreseen, but uh, who knows what the future brings on this. Uh, Metal, can you explain how this proposed technical architecture can be integrated with tool-based JavaScript microservices uh, framework? I'm not sure if I understand the question. Yeah, well, it looks like um, uh, the question is about how we combine JavaScript with the Compass uh, framework. So, so uh, our okay. idea is to use OpenSCD as a front end, uh, and that's uh, written in uh, in JavaScript. So it all runs in the browser. Um, but if you want to do a little bit more advanced things, or you want to integrate with other systems, um, then we're we're planning to uh, to add a database to uh, Compass, and using APIs, uh, we can interface with Open uh, OpenSCD and load files into it or, or, or change them in OpenSD and write them back to Compass. Well, that's the uh, that's the ID for now. Um, where can you find more information about OpenSCD? Uh, you can look yeah, it up on I'm just adding, uh, adding, the, uh, adding, uh, adding the GitHub, uh, adding the GitHub, the, adding the GitHub repository and the GitHub pages. So there you can get some more information. And you can ask, for example, for example, a Christian, um, to a Christian, uh, to a Christian Dinkle for more information. So another question was, could Compass be used to configure a gateway to DER using 61 in 57, uh, 420? Yes, so uh, our idea is to use um, 61 in 50. So as long as it's 50, 61 and 50, it uses substation configuration language. And if it supports the language, uh, it probably supports the tool. Um, uh, like we said, we're, we don't have a release yet, but it should be possible in the, in the, in the future. Uh, a question from Jakub. In your review slide, you show Compass interacting with CPAS and Flash Power. Could this be used uh, anyhow combined with third party IDs or gateway? Yeah, so that's the entire ID. If you're if you're buying IEDs, the proprietary ones in the, in the market right now, um, they somehow have a way to uh, to incorporate your substation configuration definition in your substation configuration language. So that's already supported by the vendors. However, some vendors they add some. Uh, own extensions to the substation configurations or make some some private extensions so yeah what's not in the standards that's obviously you're harder to uh, uh to to use so there might be some improbability issues there um but yeah maybe we can solve them in the in the long run as well How to get a recording of this session? Um, according to my knowledge, this recording will be published on the, on the, the YouTube channel of Elf Energy. Yep. That's true. I think we are out of time. So, if there aren't any more questions, yeah. Well, in that case, thank you all for joining. If you have uh, more questions, uh, yeah, feel free, feel free to contact us over the channels and um, have a nice conference. Yeah, thank you. Hello, everybody.
Can you guys hear me? Are there any questions? Yes, if you've got some questions, uh, leave them in the Q&A section. I see a question showing up from Raphael. How do you see the configuration of what's not public 61850 inside uh, a relay, e.g. HMI private 61850? Yeah, I think that's, um, that's a challenge. <laughs> Um, if you talk about HMI, I know that uh, there's an IEC standard, uh, or they're, they're working on one. So in, in that case, you can uh, configure your HMI using 61850. However, I expect that it takes some time for vendors to, uh, to implement that. Yeah, in case of a uh, private uh, uh, 61850, I, I think we, uh, we need to... Uh, yeah, prevent uh, private extensions as much as possible. And I think the long-term solution would be if there are still uh, private extensions necessary to get some functions working, uh, I would suggest to add that to the 6150 uh, standard itself. And therefore, um, yeah, uh, uh, make the 6150 uh, work for all use cases. Uh, and in general terms, uh, by uh, working on Compass, uh, maybe we can uh, can put more pressure on on, on uh, vendors to uh, uh, to to work with uh, 6150 uh, completely, and and don't make private extensions when it's not needed. Um, but uh, yeah, that will take some uh, will take some time. Does that answer your question? In case uh, these are all the questions, then I think uh, thank you for participating. 
And uh, yeah, if you still have more questions, reach out uh, via the uh, shown uh, channels. We'll uh, happy to uh, to answer your question. Absolutely. And uh, enjoy uh, the rest of the conference. All right, guys. Uh, bye. Bye bye. <laughs>